Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Esther B. Griswold Theater for the Performing Arts on the campus of American International College. During this evening's, evening's performance, we would very much appreciate it if you would please turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. These students have worked very hard to show you their work, and we would very much appreciate that. This production runs a little longer than two hours with a 15-minute intermission. There is some choice language and adult situation, so we would appreciate your patience. Enjoy the show. Exist. 
Your clay is the clay of some litter box metal. Your air is the air of the steppies. Because she carried the old world on her back across the ocean. And she put it down on Grand Concourse Avenue or on Flatbush. <laughs> and she worked that earth into your bones. And you pass it on to your children. This ancient, ancient culture and home. You can never make the voyage that she made. For no such crossings exist in the world today. But between the miles you travel, between this place and the next, in you that journey is. You understand? So, she was the last of the Mohicans, this one. Pretty soon, all the old will be dead. Please not take the Lord's name in vain. 
I'm sorry, but please, at least right. one. Right, sorry, fuck. <laughs> Only in America. <laughs> Baby doll, tell them all to fuck off. Tell them I died. You handle Mrs. Stopper. Tell her it's on the way. I know how much I borrowed. I'll have it back to her. Tell her I'm stripping the judge. <laughs> yes, I know how much I borrowed. She's got 400 times that stuffed up her. Yeah, tell her that. So, Joe. I'm sorry, Roy, but please. No, no, no. Principles count. I respect principles. I'm not religious, but God likes me and I like him. Baptist, Catholic, Mormon. Ah, Mormon, delectable. Only in America. So, Joe, what do you think? It's, well, crazy life, chaotic. Yeah, but God bless chaos, right? Um. I knew Mormons in uh, Nevada. Utah, mostly. No, no, these Mormons, they were in Vegas. <laughs> so, Joe, how'd you like to go to Washington and work for the Justice Department? Sorry? How'd you like to go to Washington and work for the Justice Department? I just gotta pick up the phone, talk to Ed, and you're in. In what exactly? Associate Assistant, Eternal Affairs, something big, part of the woods, something nice with clout. And me, the Attorney General. Oh, I just gotta pick up the phone. I have to think. Of course, Joe. It's a great time to be in Washington. Roy, it's incredibly exciting. And it would mean something to me, you understand? I, I can't say how much I appreciate this, Roy. I'm sort of, well, stunned, I mean. Thanks, Roy. But I have to give it some thought. I have to ask my wife. Your wife, of course. But I really appreciate it. Of course, talk to your wife. Maybe there'll be harvest then. Maybe early dates to eat. Maybe new 
nice, maybe fresh blood, maybe companionship and love and protection, safety from what's outside. Maybe the door will close or maybe the troubles will come and the end will come and the sky will collapse and there will be terrible rains and shower or poison and light or maybe I'm really fine and Joe really loves me and I'm only going crazy thinking otherwise or maybe it's worse than what I know or maybe I want to or maybe I don't to suspect Mr. Lies is killing me. I suggest the vacation. That was the elevator. I took the bus up. You have to go. You shouldn't be here. You aren't even real. Call me when you decide. Go! Buddy? Buddy? Sorry I was late. I was just out, walking. Are you mad? I got a little anxious. Buddy kiss? Nothing to get anxious about, so... So how'd you like to move to what? My grandmother actually heard Emma Goldman speak in Yiddish. But all she remembers is that she spoke well and wore a funny hat. What a weird service, that rabbi. A definite fine. You should get his number when he gets the graveyard. I want him to bury me. Better head out there. Everyone gets to throw dirt on the grave once it's lowered in. Ooh, cemetery. Fine. Don't want to miss that. It's a Jewish expression to show love. Here, Grandma, have a shovel full. Latecomers run the risk of not being able to throw dirt on the grave once it's completely filled. She was crazy. She was up in that room for 10 years, talking to herself. I never did visit. She looked too much like my mother. Carlos, I'm sorry I got with that. Tiny little coffin, huh? I'm sorry I didn't introduce you to. I get so closeted at these family things. Butch, you get butch. Hello, cousin Doris. I'm Lou, I'm Lou Rachel's boy. Lou, not Louis, because if you say Louis, they'll hear your sibling. S. I don't have an I S. I do I do. <laughs> Jewish curses are the worst. I personally would dissolve if anyone could look me in the eye and say, Fuck. <coughs> Oh, uh, by the way, darling, Cousin Doris is a dyke. No! Really? If you don't notice anything. I swear, if I hadn't spent the last year, four years filleting you, you were straight. You're in a pissy mood. Cat still miss it? Not a fair ball in sight. It's your fault. It is? I warned you, Lewis. Names are important. If you call an animal little Shiva, then you can't expect it to stick around. I wanted a dog in the first place, not a cat. He sprayed my books. He was a female cat. Cats are stupid. I strong predators. Dogs have brains. Cats have intuition. Cats are stupid. I don't mess with cats, and you know that. Cats know when something's wrong. Know what? She knew <coughs> before she left. I did my best Shirley Booth this morning. Floppy slippers, a house coat, curlers, a can of little friskies. Come back, little Sheila. Come back. To no avail. Let's shout. And now that it's a large night. See? That's just a first blood vessel. Not according to the best medical authorities. What? Tell me. Okay, yes, baby. Lesion number one. Lucky. The wine dark kiss of the angel of death. Oh, please. I'm a lesion here. The foreign lesion. The American lesion. Lesion here to disease. Stop. My trouble is our lesion. Will you stop? I, I had wind as well. I'm going to die. Bullshit. Let go of my arm. No. Let's go. No. Don't. I can't find the way this very baby. No wall like the wall of hard scientific facts. Chaos, wham. Bang your head against that. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Now that's what I like to hear from the jury action. Let's go see the cat. When did you find this? I can't tell you. Why? I was scared, Blue. Of what? That you'll leave me. Oh. Bad timing and all, but I figured since when it seems subject to death. I have to bury my grandmother. Lou, then you'll come home? Then I'll come home. Washington, it's an incredible honor, buddy. I have to think. Of course. Say no. You said you're going to think about it. I don't want to move to Washington.
Washington. Well, I do. It's a giant cemetery with huge white graves and mausoleums everywhere. We could live in Maryland or Georgetown. We're happy here. That's not really true, buddy. Well, happy enough. Pretend happy. That's better than nothing. It's time to make some changes, Harper. No changes. Why? I've been chief clerk for four years. I made $29,000 a year. That's ridiculous. I graduated fourth in my class. I make less than anyone I know, and I, I'm tired of being a clerk. I want to go where something good is happening. Nothing good happens in Washington. We'll forget church teachings and buy furniture at, at Conrad's and become yuppie. I have too much to do here. Like what? I have to finish painting the bedroom. You've been painting in there for over a year. Well, I'm afraid to go in there alone. Afraid of what? Afraid to go in in the bedroom. I hear things. Metal scrapings on the wall. Oh, there's something creepy about this place. Remember Rosemary's baby? Rosemary's baby? Our apartment looked like that one. Wasn't that apartment in Brooklyn? No, it was. Well, it looked like this. It did. Then let's move. Georgetown's worse. The exorcist was in Georgetown. <laughs> the devil. Everywhere you turn, huh, buddy? Yeah, <coughs> everywhere. How many pills today, buddy? None. One. Three. Only three. Why are there just two little wooden pegs holding the lid down tight? So she can get out easier if she wants to. <laughs> I hope she stays put. For years, I'd act like she was already dead. When they called me and told me she died, it was a surprise. I'd abandon her. Shark for beating soon as slime. Is it ungunk for kind? Rabbi, what does the Holy Rich say about someone who loves someone and abandons them in their greatest time of need? Why would the person do such a thing? Because he has to. Maybe because this person's sense of the world that it will change for the better with struggle. Maybe this person has this neo-meagling and positive sense of constant historical progress towards happiness or struggle, or whatever. Maybe sores and vomits really found frighten him. Maybe he's just afraid of death. The scriptures have nothing to say about such a person. Rabbi, I'm afraid of the crimes I may commit. Please, mister, I'm a sick old rabbi with a long ride home to the Bronx. If you want forgiveness, better you find a priest. But I'm a Jew, not a Catholic. Worse luck for you, Bubba. <laughs> Catholics believe in forgiveness. Jews believe in guilt. You just make sure those wooden pegs are in tight. The life she lived, she's better off. Look, I know this is scary for you, but try to understand what this means to me. Will you try? Yes. Good. Really try. I think things are starting to change in the world. But I don't want to move Wait. on. For the good. Change for the good. America has rediscovered itself. It's sacred position among nations. And people aren't ashamed of that like they used to be. This is a great thing. Truth restored. Law restored. That's what President Reagan's done, Harper. He says truth exists and can be spoken proudly. And the country responds to him. We become more better, more good. I need to be a part of that. I need something big to lift me up. I mean, six years ago, the world seemed in decline. Horrible, hopeless, full of unsolvable problems, and crime, and confusion, and hunger. Well, it still seems that way, more now than before. They say the ozone from the Bay Area is. Harper. And today, out the window on Atlantic Avenue, there was this schizophrenic traffic cop who was making these weird- Stop it! I'm trying to make a point. So am I. You aren't even making sense. My point is, the world seems just as if it was trying to. It only seems that way to you because you never go out in the world. Harper, you have emotional problems. I just so get out in the world. You don't. You stay in all day, fretting about imaginary friends. I get out. I do. You don't know what I do. You don't stay in all day. No. Well, yes, you do. That's what you think. Where do you go? Where do you go? when you walk, and I do not have emotional problems. I'm sorry. And if I do have emotional problems, it's from living with you. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, if I you think I do, then you should never have married 
betrayed me. You have all these secrets and lies. I want to be married to you, Harper. You shouldn't. You never should. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Buddy kiss. I heard on the radio how to give a blowjob. What? You want to try? You really should listen to stuff like you that. You can't give blowjobs. Harper. Job. It was a little Jewish lady with a German accent. I think it was a time for me to make a baby. Then they went on to a program talking about holes in the ozone layer over Antarctica. Skin burns, birds go blind, iceberg melts. The world's coming to an end. Ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> Juan wants to move through life with elegance and grace, blossoming frequently but with exquisite taste and perfect timing. One wants, but one so seldom gets what one wants. Does one? No. One gets fucked over. One dies at 30. Robbed of decades of majesty. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. I look like a corpse. A corpse set. <laughs> oh, my queen. You know, your pet rock bottom won't even drag as a drag. <laughs> Imaginary friend. <laughs> well, I have emotional problems. 
I took too many pills. Why are you wearing makeup? I was in the process of applying the face, making myself feel better. I swiped these fall colors at the cleaning counter at Macy's. You stole these? I was out of cash. It was an emotional emergency. <laughs> no, be so angry. I promised him no more pills. These pills you keep alluding to. Value. I take value, lots of value. And now you're dancing as fast as you can. Well, I'm not addicted. I don't believe in addiction. I, well, I never drink and I never take drugs. Well, smell you, Nancy Drew. Except value. Except values and we fist. It's terrible. Mormons aren't supposed to be addicted to anything. I'm a Mormon. I'm a homosexual. <laughs> oh, at my church, we don't believe in homosexuals. In my church, we don't believe in Mormons. <laughs> what church do you go to? The... Oh, I get it. I don't understand this. If I didn't ever see you before, and I don't think I did, then I don't think you should be <coughs> in this hallucination. Because in my experience, the mind, which is where the hallucinations come from, shouldn't be able to make up anything that wasn't there to start with, that didn't enter it from experience, from the real world. Imagination can't create anything new, can it? It recycles bits and pieces of the world and reassembles them into vision. Am I making any sense right now? Given the circumstances, yes. So when we think we've escaped the unbearable ordinariness and, well, the untruthfulness of our lives, it really only is the same old ordinariness and falseness rearranged into the appearance of nobility and truth. Nothing unknown is noble. Don't you think it's depressing? The limits of the imagination? Yes. It's something you learn after your second theme party. It's all been done before. <laughs> the world. Finite. Terribly, terribly. Well, this is the most depressing hallucination I've ever had. Apologies, I do try to be amusing. <laughs> oh, well. Don't apologize, do I? I don't expect someone who's really sick to entertain me. How on earth did you know? Oh, that happens. This is the very threshold of revelation sometimes. I can see things. How sick you are. Do you see anything about me? Yes. What? You're amazingly unhappy. Oh, big deal. You meet a valley manic and you figure out she's unhappy? That doesn't count. Of course I'm a... Something else. Something surprising. Something surprising. Yes. Your husband's a homo. <laughs> Ridiculous. Really? Threshold of revelations. Well, I don't like your revelations, and I don't think you into it well at all. Joe's a very normal man, and he always goes. He. Oh God, he. Do homos take like lots of long walks? Yes. <laughs> He's stretching out the leather my clothes. I looked at you, and there was a sort of like... A sort of blue streak of recognition. Yes. Like you knew me incredibly well. Yes. Yes! I have to go. Get back. Something just fell apart. Oh, God. I feel so sad. I, I'm sorry. I usually say, fuck the truth. But mostly the truth fucks you. I see something else about you. Oh? Deep down inside of you, there's a part of you, the inner part, entirely free of disease. I can see that. Is that? <laughs> that that's not true. Threshold of revelation. Oh. People come and go so quickly here. There's not an uninfected part of me. My heart is pumping polluted blood. No. Just out, thinking. 
I burned dinner. Sorry. Not my dinner. My dinner was fine. Your dinner. I put it back into the oven and turned it up so high as it could go, and I washed it till it burned black. Still hot. Very hot. You want it? You didn't have to do that. I know. It just seemed like the kind of thing a mentally deranged, sex star, pill popping housewife would do. Uh huh. So I did it. Who knows anymore what I have to do? How many pills? A bunch. Don't change the subject. I won't talk to you when No, you... no, don't do that. I'm fine. Pills aren't the problem, not our problem. I want to know where you've been, and I want to know what is going on. Going on with what? The job? Not the job. I said I need more time. Not the job. Mr. Cohen, I talked to him on the phone. It's he said not the job. I can't get stuck sensibly bound. Shut up! Then what? Stick to the subject. I don't know what that is. You have something you want to ask me? <coughs> ask me. Go. I can't. I'm scared of you. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Tell me without making me ask, please. This is crazy. I'm not. Every time you walk in through the door at night, your face never seems exactly the way I remembered it. I get surprised about something, mean and hard about the way you look. Even the weight of you in bed at night and the way you breathe <coughs> in your sleep seems unfamiliar. You terrify me. I know who you are. Yes. I'm the enemy. That's easy. That doesn't change. You think you're the only one who hates sex? I do. I hate it with you. I do. I dream that you batter away at me till all my joints come apart and I fall into pieces like wax. It was a punishment. It was wrong for me to marry you. I think it's a sin. And it's killing us both. I can always tell when you've taken pills. And it makes you bright faced and sweaty. And frankly, it's very often why I don't want to. Because? Well, you aren't pretty. Not like this. I have something to ask you. Then ask, ask! What in the hell are you? Are you a homo? <laughs> are you? If you try to walk away from me right now, I'll put your dinner back into the oven and turn it up so high the whole building will fill with smoke and everyone in it will asphyxiate, so help me God, I will. Yeah. Now answer the question. What if I? Then tell me, please, and we'll see. No, I'm not. I don't see what difference it makes. Jews don't have any clear text or guide for the afterlife, or even that it exists. I don't think about it much. I see it as a rainy perpetual Thursday afternoon in March. Dead leaves. Ugh, very cracker Roman. Well, to us it's the verdict that doesn't matter. It's the act of judgment. That's why I couldn't be a lawyer. In court, all that matters is the verdict. You can't be a lawyer because you're a full of sex. You're too distracted. Not distracted, abstracted. I'm trying to prove a point. Namely? That it's the judge in his or her chambers, weighing, opening books, ranging freely over categories, evil, guilty, innocent. The judge of circumcision, the judge behind the bench with his gavel, the shaping of law, not its execution. The point here, the point. That it's the question to shape over life. It's total complexity gathered, arranged and considered. Not some stance on salvation or damnation, which disperses in all complexity in some little unsatisfying decision. The balancing of scales. I like this, very zen. It is reassuringly incomprehensible and useless. We who are about to die, thank you. You're not about to die. It's not going well, really. Two new lesions. My leg hurts. There's protein in my urine, the doctor says, but who knows what the fuck that pretends to. Anyways, it shouldn't be there. My back, my butt's chapped, my butt's chapped from diarrhea, and yesterday I checked blood. I really hate this. You don't tell me anything. You get too upset. I wind up comforting you. It's easier if we do it this way. Oh, thanks. If it's that, I'll tell you. Shouldn't blood sound bad to me? And I'm telling you. And I'm handling it. Tell me some more about justice. I'm handling it. Well, Lewis, you went trooper of the month. I take it back. You don't win trooper of the month. This is not working. Tell me some more about justice. You're not about to die. Justice. Is an immensity, a confusing vastness. Justice is God. Prior, mm. do you love me? Yes. What if I walked out on this? Would you hate me forever? Yes. I think that we ought to pray. Ask God for help. Ask him together. God won't talk to me. I have to 
to make up people to talk to me. You have to keep asking. I forgot the question. Oh, yeah. God is my husband, a homo. Stop it, stop it. I'm warning you. Does it make any difference? I might be one thing deep within. No matter how wrong or ugly that thing is, so long as I have fun with everything that I have to kill it. What do you want from me? What do you want from me, Harper? More than that, for God's sake, there's nothing left. I'm a shell. There's nothing left to kill. So long as my behavior, so I don't have to be decent, correct, that I'm in the eyes of God. No, no, not that. That's a use of talk. Mormon talk. I hate it, y'all. Tell me, say it. All I will say is I'm a very good man who's worked very hard to become good. And you want to destroy that. You want to destroy me. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to have a baby. Liar! You liar! A baby born addicted to pills. A baby who does not dream but who hallucinates. Who stares up at us with big mirror eyes and who does not know who we are. Are you... Are you really going to have a baby? No. Yes! Mr. Wizard, why the fuck are you telling me this? Well, 
I just removed one of three lesions, which biopsy results probably will tell us is a Carpozzi sarcoma lesion. You have pronounced swelling in the glands in your throat, groin, and under your armpits. Oral cantoniasis is another sign, lipidinopathy. And you have a little more fungus under the fingernails in your right hand of two digits. So that's why. This disease. <laughs> syndrome. Whatever. It afflicts mostly homosexuals and drug addicts. Mostly. Hemophiliacs are also at risk. Homosexuals and drug addicts. So why are you implying that I... What are you implying, Henry? I don't understand. I'm not a drug addict. Oh, come on, Roy. What? Come on, Roy, what? Do you think I'm a junkie, Henry? Do you see tracks? This is absurd. Say it. Say what? Say, Roy Cohn, you are a... Roy, I don't know... You are a... Go on, Henry. Not Roy Cohn, you are a drug fiend. Roy Marcus Cohn, you are a... Go on, Henry, it starts with an H. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not going... With to... an H, Henry, and it isn't hemophiliac. Go on, say it. What are you doing, Roy? No, say it. I mean, say, Roy Cohn, you are a homosexual. And I will proceed systematically to destroy your reputation and your career and your practice in New York State, which you know I can do. Roy, I've been seeing you since 1958. <coughs> Apart from the facelifts, I've treated you for syphilis. From a whore in Dallas. From syphilis to venereal warts in your rectum, which you might have gotten from a whore in Dallas, but it wasn't a female whore. So say it. Roy Cohn, you... You've had sex with men many, many times, and one of them or any number of them has got you very sick. Roy, you have AIDS. AIDS. Your problem, Henry, is you're hung up on words, on labels. You think they tell you what they seem to mean. AIDS, homosexual, gay, lesbian. You think these are names to tell you who someone sleeps with, but they don't tell you that at all. No? No. Like all labels, they refer to one thing and one thing only. Where does an individual so identified fit in the food chain, the pecking order? Not ideology or sexual taste, but something much simpler than that. Clout. Not who I fuck or who fucks me, but who pick up the phone when I call. Who owes me a favor? Now, to someone who does not understand this, a homosexual is someone who sleeps with another man. But in this, they are wrong. A homosexual is not a man who sleeps with another man. A homosexual is a man who in 15 years of trying can't pass a piss and anti-discrimination bill through city council. A homosexual is a man who knows nobody and who nobody knows, who has zero clout. Now, does this sound like me, Henry? No. No, Henry, I have clout, a lot. I'll pick up your phone, punch in 15 numbers. Do you know the other end in under five minutes? The president? Even better, Henry, his wife. I'm impressed. I don't want you to be impressed. I want you to understand, this is not sophistry and this is not hypocrisy. This is reality. I mess around with guys. But in light of every other man of whom this is true, I take the guy that I'm screwing to the White House. President Reagan smiles up at us and shakes his hand. Because what I am is entirely defined by who I am. Roy Cohn is not a homosexual. Roy Cohn is a heterosexual man who fucks around with guys. Okay, Roy. And what is my diagnosis, Henry? You have AIDS, Roy. No, Henry, no. AIDS is what homosexuals have. I have liver cancer. Well, whatever the fuck you have, Roy, it's pretty serious. And I don't have a damn thing for you. The NIH in Bethesda has a new drug called AZT with a two-year waiting list that not even I can get you on. So get on the phone, Roy, and dial the 15 numbers and tell the first lady that you need in an experimental drug for liver cancer. Because you can call it any damn thing you want, but what it boils down to is very bad news. Okay. Louis! Louis, no, no, please! Don't let me go there! If I even go there, I 
won't come back. Please, Lewis. Lewis! Please shut the fuck up! Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to. Uh, oh, God. Prior? They said they'll be here. Oh, God. oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did? I'm sorry. I had an accident. I'm sorry. This is blood! I just need you to touch it. I need. Oh. oh God. Oh God. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Why are you standing in the dark? Turn on the lights. No. I heard the sound from the bedroom again. I think someone was in there. No one was. Maybe actually in the bed under the covers. A man with a knife. Oh boy, Joe, I think I'm leaving, but which I think I'm going off again. You, you know what I mean? Uh, please, please don't. Stay. We can fix it. I pray for that. This is my fault. If I can correct it, you have to try too. When you pray, what do you pray for? I pray for God to crush me. To break me up into little pieces and start, start all over again. Oh, please, don't pray for that. I had a book of Bible stories when I was a kid. There was a picture I'd look at 20 times every day. Jacob wrestled with an angel. I don't really remember the story or why the wrestling, just the picture. Jacob is young and very strong. The angel is a beautiful man with golden hair and wings, of course. I still dream about it many nights. I'm, it's me in that struggle, fierce and unfair. The angel is not human and it holds nothing back. So how can anyone human hope to win? What, what kind of a fight is that? It's not just losing into your soul thrown down in the dust, your heart torn out from God's. You can't not lose. In the whole entire world, you are the only person, the only person I loved or ever have loved. I love you terribly, terribly. That's what's so awfully, irreducibly real. I can make up anything, but I can't drink that away. Are you, are you really going to have a baby? It's my time, and there's no blood. I guess it wouldn't be a great thing. Maybe I'm just not bleeding because I drink too many pills, or maybe I'll give birth to a pill. That'll give the meaning to new pill popping hot. <laughs> I think you should go to Washington. Alone. Change, like you said. I'm not going to leave you, Harper. Well, maybe not. But I'm going to leave you. Mathilde stitched while William Cockrell was off to the water. 
She was capable of more than devotion, loyalty. If he would have came back broken and defeated from war, she would have still have loved him. And if he would have came back full of affection, horror, she would have loved him even more. Fed by pity, by sharing of pain, she would have loved him even more and even more. And she would have never, never have prayed to God, please let him die if he can't return to me whole and healthy. If she would have died, she would have buried his heart with him. So what the fuck is the matter with me? Will he sleep through the night? At least. I'm going. It's 1 a.m. Where do you have to go by? A walk, the park, something. Be careful. Yeah, danger. If you're on when he wakes, tell him I love him. Tell him I had to go. started to take when she miscarried, or no, she took some before that. She had a really bad time at home when she was a kid. Her home was really bad. I think a lot of drinking and physical stuff. She doesn't talk about that. Instead, she talks about the sky falling down, people with knives hiding under sofas, monsters, Mormons. Everyone thinks Mormons don't come from homes like that, that we aren't supposed to behave that way. But we do. It's not lying or being two-faced. Everyone tries very hard to live up to God's scriptures, which are very, um... Strict? I shouldn't be bothering you with this. No, please. Heart to heart. Uh, one another. What is that? Seltzer? The failure to measure up hits people very hard from such a strong desire to be good that they feel far from goodness when they fail. What scares me is that maybe what I love in her is the part of her that's farthest from the light, from God's love. Maybe I was drawn to that in the first place, and I'm keeping it alive because I needed it. Why would you need it? There are things, I don't know how well we know ourselves. I mean, what if, I know I married, married her because, because I loved it that she was always wrong, always doing something wrong, like one step out of step. In Salt Lake City, that stands out. I never stood out on the outside. Inside, it was hard for me to pass. Pass? Yeah. Pass as what? <coughs> oh, well, as someone cheerful and strong. Those who love God with an open heart, unclouded by secrets and struggles, are cheerful. God's easy, simple love in them shows how strong and happy they are, the saints. But you had secrets, secret struggle? I want to be one of the elect, one of the blessing. You feel you ought to be that the blemishes are yours by choice, which of course, of course they aren't. Heart for sorrow, that really deep sorrow, she didn't choose that, but it's there. You didn't put it there. No. You sound like you think you did. I am responsible for her. Because she's your wife. <laughs> well, that, and I do love her. Whatever, she's your wife, and so there are obligations to her, but also to yourself. She'll fall apart in Washington. Then leave her here. She'll fall apart if I leave her. Then bring her to Washington. I just can't, Roy. She needs me. Listen, Joe, I'm the best divorce lawyer in the business. Can't Washington wait? You do what you need to, Joe. You, what you need. Let her life go where it will. You'll both be better off for it. Somebody should go if they want around here. What do you want? I want you to fuck me, hurt me, make me bleed. I want to. Yeah, I want to hurt you. Fuck me. Yeah, hard. Yeah, you been a bad boy? Very bad. Very bad. You need to be punished for it? Yes, I do. Yes, what? Um, I... Yes, what, boy? Oh, yes, sir. I want you to take me to your place, boy. No, I can't do that. No, what? No, sir. I can't. I... I don't live alone, sir. Your lover know you're out here with the man tonight, boy? No, sir. He... Your lover know... My lover doesn't know. Let's change the subject, okay? Can we go to your place? I live with my parents. Oh. <laughs> Everyone who makes it in this world, Joe, makes it because someone older and more powerful takes an interest. The most precious asset in life, I think, is the ability to be a good son. You have that, Joe. A good son to a father who pushes them farther than they otherwise go. I've had many fathers. I owe my life to them. Powerful, powerful men. 
Walter Winchell, Edgar Hoover, Joe McCarthy most of all. He valued me because I'm a good lawyer, but he loves me because I was and am a good son. He was very difficult, very guarded and cagey, but I brought out something tender in him. He would have died for me and me for him. Does this embarrass you? I, I had a hard time with my father. Sometimes that's the way. Then you have to find other fathers, substitutes. The father-son is so essential to life. Women are for birth, beginning, but the father, a father is for continuance. The son offers the father his life as a vessel to carry forth the father's dream. Is your father living? Uh, dead. He was what, a difficult man? He was in the military. He could be very unfair and very cold, but he loved you. I, I don't know that. No, Joe, he did, I know this. Sometimes a father's love has to be very difficult, hard, to make the son grow strong in the world around him. This isn't a good world. Here's an I. Do you have a rubber? I don't use rubbers. You should. Here. I don't use them. Forget it then. No, wait. Put it on me, boy. Forget it. I have to get back. Home. I must be going crazy. Oh, come on. Please. He won't find out. It's cold. Too cold. It's never too cold. Let me warm you up. Please. Ah. Relax. I, not a chance. It, what? I think it must have broke. It broke or slipped off. You didn't put it on right. Or you want me to keep going? Pull out? Should I? Keep going. Infect me. I don't care. I don't care. I, um, look. I'm sorry, but I think I want to go. Yeah. Give my best to mom and dad. Oh. Ow! It was a joke. Oh no, c'est pas pour la jouer Noël et ma bonne année. 
this drug is some serious poisonous chemistry, and not just disorienting. I hear things. Voices. Voices? A voice. Saying <laughs> what? I'm not supposed to tell. If you don't tell me, I will tell the No, doctor. no, please don't. I, I want the voice. It's wonderful. I don't want to talk to some intern about it. You know what happens when I hear it? I get hard. Oh, my. <laughs> Come sad. And you know I am slow to rise. My job aches at the memory. And you would deny me this little solace? Betray my concupiscence to Florence Nightingale's stormtroopers. Perse the thought of it. They took the drug just to spoil the fun. And you and your bone can depend on me. <laughs> just, just destroy my Del Negra. All this girl talk shit is politically incorrect. We should have dropped it when we gave up drugs. I'm sick. I get to be politically incorrect if I want to be. You sound like Lewis. Anyways, at least I have the satisfaction of knowing that he's in anguish somewhere. I love his anguish. Watching him stick his head up his ass while eating his guts out for some minor moral conundrum. Best damn show in town. But Mother said, if they get overwhelmed by the little things, they'll be belly up plus filled when the big things come along. Mother warned me. And they do come along. But I didn't listen. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, men are beasts. The absolute lowest. Well, I gotta go, girlfriend. If I want to spend my whole lonely life here looking after white people, I can get underpaid to do it. <laughs> You're a Christian martyr. You know, baby, I will always be here for you. Get to do it. Do the door. Is that true? <sighs> Don't go crazy on me, girlfriend. I got enough crazy queens for one lifetime, for two. And I do not want to be bothered with dementia. I promise. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. Why'd they have to pick on you, girlfriend? You really do need to eat more. You really do look like shit. <laughs> He's gone. Are you still there? I can't stay. I will return. Are you one of those following me to the other side voices? <clears throat> no. I am no night bird. I am a messenger. I, you have a beautiful voice. Sounds like a viola. Like a perfectly tuned, tight stringed balance. The truth. Stay with me. Please. Not now. Soon I will return. I will reveal myself to you. I am glorious, glorious. My heart, my countenance, and my message. You must prepare. For what? I don't want to. No, death, no. A marvelous work and a wonder we undertake. An edifice awry, we seek plumb and straighten. A great lie, we abolish. A great error, correct. With the rule, sword, and broom of truth. What are you talking about? I don't understand. I am on my way. When I am manifest, our work begins. <coughs> Prepare for the parting of the air, the breath, the ascent, glory to.
Mr. Heller here is one of the mighty. He sitteth on the right hand of the man. Who sitteth on the right hand of the man? Yet I'll tell him to shut the fuck up and it'll take no offense. Loyalty. This man knows Samurai. I know, Mr. Heller. You see what I'm talking about? He's special, right? Don't embarrass him, Roy. Gravity, decency, smarts. His strength is the strength of ten, because his heart is pure. And he's a Roy boy, 100%. We're on the move, Joe, on the move. Mr. Heller, I We can't wait any longer for an answer. Oh, um, I... Joe's a married man, Martin. Uh-huh. With a wife. She doesn't care to go to D.C., so he keeps us here dangling. We've dealt with this before, haven't we? These men and their wives. Oh, yes, beware. I really can't discuss this. Then don't either. discuss. Say yes, Joe. Now. Say yes, I will. Now. I'll hold my breath till you do. I'm turning blue. Now, goddammit! Yes, ah, no. fuck it! Bree, it came today. Uh, Roy! Roy, th this is terrible! You're telling me. A letter from the New York State Bar Association. They're gonna try and disbar me. <coughs> oh my! Why? Why, Martin? Prevent! The whole establishment, their little rules. Because I know no rules. Because I don't see the law as a dead, arbitrary collection of antiquated dictums. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. Because I know the law is a living, breathing, pliable organ. Because... Because he brought a half a million from one of his clients. And there's that. And he forgot to return it. Roy, Dad, you borrowed money from a client? I'm deeply ashamed. <laughs> Roy, you know how much I admire you. Well, I mean... Not so damn. I'll deny I was alone. No fucking paperwork. Can't prove a fucking thing. Roy, I really appreciate your telling me this. And I'll do whatever I can to help. I'll tell you what you can do, Joe. I'm about to be tried by a jury that is not a jury of my peers, but this disbarment committee. Genteel gentlemen, Braham lawyers, country club men. To them I'm what, Martin? Some sort of filthy little Jewish troll? Oh, well, I wouldn't go so far as... Oh, well, I would. These fancy lawyers with their complex cases and corporate clients. Antitrust suits, deregulation. Environmental control. These cases need Justice Department cooperation like flowers need the sun. Wouldn't you say that's an accurate assessment, Martin? I'm not here, Roy. I'm not here to any of this. Of course not. A well-placed friend in the Justice Department, say, could turn off the sun, cast a deep shadow on my behalf, make them shiver in the cold. They would fear that. Roy, I don't understand. You do. You're not asking me to. Careful. Even if I said yes to the job, it'd be illegal to interfere with the hearings. It's unethical. I just can't. Unethical? Would you excuse us, Martin? Excuse me. Take a walk, Martin, for real. Unethical. Are you trying to embarrass me in front of my friends? Well, it is unethical. I can't. Boy, you are really something. What the fuck do you think this is, Sunday school? No, but Roy, this is... This is? This is gastric juices churning. This is enzymes. This is intestinal. Bowel movements and blood red meat. This stinks. This is politics. The game of being alive. And you're what? Above that? Above that is what? Dead. In the clouds. You're on Earth, goddammit, and plan a book. Stay a while. I'm sick. They smell I'm weak. Injustice, you're going to protect me. Why can't Mr. Heller? I'll grow up. The administration can't get involved. But I'd be part of the administration. The same as him. No. Martin is Ed's man. Ed's Reagan's man. So Martin's Reagan's man. And you're mine. This will never be, understand me? I'm gonna be a lawyer, Joe. I'm gonna be a lawyer, Joe. I'm gonna be a goddamn motherfucking legally licensed member of the Bar Association just like my daddy was. Till my last bitter day on Earth. Till the day I die. Ah, Martin's back! So, are we agreed? Joe! I will, I will think about it. I will. It's the fear of what comes after the doing that makes the doing hard to do. Amen. But you can almost always live with the consequences.
Can I? Oh, sure, sure. Where is the cold sun? Have to make the best of it. How's your friend? My friend? Oh, he's worse. My friend is worse. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, thanks for asking. It's nice. I can't believe you voted for Reagan. I hope he gets better. Reagan? Your friend. Oh, he won't. Neither will Reagan. Let's not talk politics, OK? You're eating three of these? Well, I'm hungry. They're terrible for you, full of rat food, beetle legs, and wood shavings and shit. Huh? And iridium, I think, something toxic. Very <coughs> what? Yeah, well, the shape. I can't help myself. <laughs> What's some time for me suicide? What's your excuse? I don't have an excuse. I so Pepto Bismol. Yeah, yeah, I know. But then I wash it down with some coke. <laughs> Are you always like this? I've been worrying a lot about his kid. Who? Reagan. You know, Maureen, Mike, little orphan Patty, and Miss Ron Reagan Jr., the youth should party the heterosexual. Ron Reagan Jr. is not. You shouldn't just make these assumptions about people. How do you know about him, what he is? You don't know. Well, darling, you never sucked my cock before, but. Look, if you're going to get vulgar. No, no, really. I mean, what is it like to be the child of a Zeitgeist? To have your father as American enemies? These are, they're not people. I read people. They're not family. There's no connection. There's no love. The only time they speak to each other is through their agents. So, what's it like to be Reagan Sutter? <coughs> Inquiring minds want to know. You can't believe everything you hear. So, tell me. You know this, all that stuff to talk about is just crazy, right? Yes, sir. All I know is, finish your weenie. Um, yesterday was Sunday, but I've been a little unfocused lately, and I thought it was Monday. So I came here like I was going to work. And the whole place was empty. And at first, I couldn't figure out why. I just had this moment of incredible fear, and also, it just flashed through my mind. The whole wall of justice, it's empty. It's deserted. It's gone out of business. Forever. The people that make it run have all been abandoned it. Creepy. Well, yes, but I felt that I was going to scream. Not because it was creepy, but because the emptiness felt so bad. And well, yes, good a happy scream. <coughs> I just wondered what they would be if, if over, overnight everything we owe anything to justice or love had really gone away. Free. It would be heartless terror. Yes. Terrible and very grim. Just shed your skin, every old skin, one by one, and then walk away, unencumbered, into the morning. I can't go in there today. Then no. I can't go in. I, I can't be this anymore. I need a change. I should just. Want some company? For whatever? <coughs> yes. Sometimes, even if it scares you to death, you have to be willing to break the law. Know what I mean? Yes. I moved out on my... I haven't been sleeping well. Me neither. Fantastic mustache. Maybe the court won't convene ever again. Maybe we're free to do whatever. Children of the new morning, criminal minds, selfish and greedy and loveless and blind, regular children. Are you afraid? Everybody's in the land of the free. God help us all.
Nothing, nothing. I just... <coughs> Harper. Is Harper... Joe? Yeah, hi, don't. Harper's fine. Well, no, she's not fine. How are you, Mom? What's happened? I just wanted to talk to you. I, um, wanted to try something out on you. Joe, are you... Have you been drinking? Yes, ma'am, I'm drunk. Well, that isn't like you. Well, no, I mean, who's to say? Well, you're calling from the street at four in the morning <coughs> in that crazy city. It's dangerous. Actually, Mom, I'm not on the street. I'm near the boathouse in the park. What park? Central Park. Central Park? Oh, my Lord. Why on earth would you be down at the park at this hour of the night? Joe, I think you really ought to go home, and you need to call me from home. Joe? I come here to watch, Mom. Sometimes just to watch. <laughs> watch what? What's there to watch at this Mom, moment? did Dad love me? What? Did he? Joe, you really need to go home and call me from there. Answer! Oh, now, really, this is maudlin. I don't like this conversation. Yeah, well, it gets worse from here on. Joe? Mom? Mama? I'm... I'm a homosexual, Mama. Boy, that came out awkward. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I'm a homosexual. Please, Mama, say something. Joe, you're old enough to understand that your father didn't love you without being ridiculous about it. What? You're ridiculous. You're being ridiculous. I'm what? Now, you need to go home, and I need to go to bed. This phone call, just, let's just forget this phone call. Mom! No more talk tonight. I, drinking is a sin. A sin! And I raised you better than that. Oh, God, home. The woman of truth has arrived. Harper, I'm moving out. The fuck you are? Harper, please listen. I still love you very much. You're still my best buddy. I'm not going to leave you. No, I don't like the sound of this. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I already have. Please listen. Okay, this is really hard. We have to talk. We are talking, aren't we? Now please just shut up, okay? That starts sneaking out while I'm flat out here. That's slow. If I could get up right now, I'd beat the holy shit out of you. Did you take the pills? How many? No pills. Bad for a You are pregnant! I spoke to your gynecologist. I'm seeing a new gynecologist. You have no right to do that! Oh, that's ridiculous! No right, it's criminal! Forget about that. Just listen. You want the truth? This is the truth. I knew this when I married you. I've known this, I guess, for as long as I've known anything else, but I don't know. I thought maybe with enough effort and will I could change myself, but I can't. You have no right. There ought to be a law. There is a law. You'll see. Forget about that. Just listen. You want the truth? You know, I'm losing ground here. I go walking. You want to know where I go to walk? I go to the park, or up and down 53rd Street, or places <laughs> where, and I swear I won't go walking again. But I just can't help it. Apartment too small for three. Lewis and Pryor, okay, but not Lewis Pryor and Pryor's disease. Something like that. I won't be touched by you. This isn't a crime. That's an inevitable consequence. Bang, bang, bang. The court will come to order. I mean, let's talk practicality. Has the jury reached the budget? I'm doing the best I can. So what? Who cares? My whole life has conspired to bring me to this place. And I can't despise my whole life. I think, I believe when I met you, I could save you. You at least, if not myself, but I don't have any sexual feelings for you, Harper. And I don't think I ever did it. I think you should go. Where? Washington. It doesn't matter. What are you talking about? Without me. Without me, Joe. Isn't that what you want to hear? Yes. You can love someone and fail them. You can love someone and not be able to. You can, theoretically, yes. A, a person can. Maybe an editorial. You can love Lewis, but not you. Specifically you. I don't know. 
I think you're excluded from that general category. You were going to save me, but the entire time you were spinning a lie. A person, I just don't understand that. A person can, and maybe many do, but we both know now you can't love Lewis. I do. You can't even say it. I love you, Pryor. I repeat, who cares? This is so scary. I want it to stop to go back. The jury has reached the verdict, Your Honor. This man's heart's deficient. He loves, but he loves me nothing. Harper! Mr. Lies, I want to get away from here, far away right now, before he starts to talk again. Please, please! As long as I've known you, Harper, you've been afraid of men hiding under the bed, men hiding under the sofa, men with knives. I'm dying, you stupid fuck. Do you know what that means, love? Do you know what love means? We lived together four and a half years, you animal, you idiot. I just need to find a way to find myself. Who are these men? I never understood, but now I know. What? It's me. It is? Get out of my room! I'm the man with the knives! You are? If I could get up right now, I'd kill you. I would. Get out, or I'll scream. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. It is you. Please don't scream. No. I recognize you now. Please. Well, <coughs> I bleed it! Ah! Here! I want to get away from here. I can't see him anymore. Wait! Anywhere. Far away. Absolute mental. When I open my eyes, you'd be gone. Harper! Oh. It worked. Harper! I hurt all over. I wish I was dead.
I was the 31st. I think. Actually, the 32nd. Not according to Mother. She's including the two bastards. Then I say, leave them out. I've got no room for bastards anyway. The little things you swallow. Pills. Pills. For the pestilence. I do. You do what? The pestilence in my time was much worse than it is today. You could look outside and see whole villages of empty houses. Death walking in the morning, dew dampening the black hem of his robe. Plain as I see you now. You died of the plague? The spotty monster, like you. Alone. I'm not alone. You have no wife, no children. I'm gay. So, be gay. Dance in your all together for all I care. What's that got to do with not having children? <laughs> gay, homosexual. Uh, not body, not fly, but never mind. I had 12 when I died, and I was three years younger than him. Oh God, another. Why won't the party like 17 other? He's counting the fastest. Are we having a convention? We did said we were a fabulous incipient to the whale king and his bulk of Alex and... The messenger come, prepare the way. The infinite descent of breath and air. <laughs> They chose us, I suspect, because of the mortal affinity. In a family as well as dependent as the Waltons, there are bound to be a few carried off by plague. The spotty monster. Black Jack came from a water pump. Half of the city of London. Do you imagine? His came from sleep. Yours, I understand, is a lamentable consequence of venery. Fleas on rats, but who knew that? Am I going to die? We're not allowed to decide. When you do, you don't get ancestors to help you through it. You may be surrounded by your wife and children, but you die alone. I'm afraid you should be. There aren't even torches in the paths, rocky, dark, and steep. Oh, don't alarm me. There's good news before there is bad. We do come to see Rose, as well as Harley, before the temple procession. Prophet, seer, revelator. It's a great honor for the family. He hasn't got a family! I met through the waters with the family in the larger state. Oh, I want is a room somewhere far away from the cold night air. Ha, ha, this is no great fever. Adonai, Adonai, Olam, Ah, Yahud, Zephyrot, Zazahot, Ha, Adam, Ha, Adol. O oh, daughter of light, daughter of splendor, lumen forth from pure candle! Even now, from the mere bright walls of heaven, oh. across the old and lifeless divinities of space, the messenger comes. Fabulous, trailing orbs of light, fabulous, incipient, oh prophet to you. Prepare, prepare the infinite descent, a breath, a feather, a glory to oh. Why has democracy succeeded in America? Of course, by succeeded, I mean comparatively. Not literally, not in the present, but what makes for the prospect of some sort of radical democracy spreading outward and growing up? Why is the power that was once so carefully preserved at the top of the pyramid by the original framers of the Constitution seem drawn inexorably downward and outward in spite of the right to stop them? I mean, it's the thing about being left in this country. The American left can't help but trip over all these petrified little fetishes. Freedom. It's the worst. You know, D. Kirkpatrick, for God's sakes, will go on and on about freedom. So what is she talking about when she says the word freedom or human rights? You have Bush talking about human rights. So what are these people talking about? They might as well be talking about the mating habit of Venusians. These people can't seem to know what, ontologically, what freedom is or human rights. This bourgeois right type from a man type right, it's not enfranchisement, not democracy. Not what's implicit, but what's the tension with the idea in it. Not the idea with blood in it. That's just liberalism. The worst kind of liberalism. Really. Bourgeois tolerance. And the thing that age shows us about tolerance is that it won't be tolerated. Because when shit hits the fan, it will really show you how much tolerance is worth. Nothing. And behind all that intense tolerance is hatred. Passionate hatred. Uh-huh. Well, don't you think so? Uh-huh, it is. Power is the object, not being tolerated. Fuck assimilation. And with all that being said, the thing 
about America? I think it's ultimately what's different from every other nation on this earth. And with every other race of people, ultimately what defines us isn't race, but politics. Not like any other European country that has an insurmountable fact of a kind of racist, or ethnic, monopoly, or monolith. Like all Dutch people are, well, Dutch. And the Jews of Europe were never European. Just a small problem facing the monolith. And here, there's no monolith. Of course, if you want to talk about the monolith of white America, white straight male America. Which is not unimpressive even among monoliths. Well, no. But when the race thing gets taken care of, and I don't mean to minimize how major it is. I mean, I know it is. This is a really, really incredible country. Right, racist country. But it's like the Brits, all these blue-eyed pink people. And I know I don't look all that Jew. Well, maybe I do. But in New York, everyone is. Well, not everyone. But in England, and one day I walk in the bar and I feel like Sydney here. And at one point, I met this black gay Jamaican guy that talked with a little, and he said his family had been here before the American War, the Civil War, the American one. And I thought, wow, here we are. We are both way too much immersed right now in this history. And whereas in America, here in America, race does not count. Well, no, no, you can't be hearing that. I thought that's what I heard. It's, look, race, yes. But ultimately, race here is used as a political question, right? Race here is used as a, political, as a tool in a political struggle. Like, all spirituals try to use that stuff. Are you channeled? Are you centered? Enlightened? Whatever. There's reaching out for a spiritual past in a country where no indigenous spirit exists. Only the Indians, I mean, Native Americans, and we kill them all, so there's no gods here. There's no spirits and angels. There's no angels in America. There's no racial past, no spiritual past. Only the political and the decoys and ploys to maneuver around the inescapable battle and the shifting downwards and outwards to the political power to the people. Well, power to the people. Amen. Oh my goodness, when you look at the time, I gotta go. What? Do you think this is naive or something? Well, it certainly is something. I just remember, I have an appointment. Well, I don't mean to be talking from some type point of privilege or anything. I'm sitting here thinking, eventually, he's got to run out of steam. So I'll let you rattle on and on saying maybe seven or eight things I really find offensive. What? And I know you would. And I know the peculiar tirade is obviously swollen bigger than your hemorrhoids. I don't have hemorrhoids. I hear different man finish. Yes, but I don't have hemorrhoids. So finally when I was getting Brian right, told you. He's an idiot. He shouldn't have. You promised Lewis. Pride is not a subject. You brought him up. I brought up the hemorrhoids. So it's indirect. That's aggressive. So banging me over the head with your theory that America doesn't have a race problem. Oh, be fair. I never said that. Not exactly. But I said. But if it would have been that blood, I would have just walked out. Just let me. Stop interrupting. No. What? You've been running your mouth nonstop since you got here. Yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Up the hill, down the hill, playing with your monolith. Well, you could have joined in instead of just. And girlfriend, it's been truly an awesome spectacle. But I got better things to do with my time than sit here listening to this racist bullshit just because I feel sorry for you. That I'm not a racist. Oh, is that a fact? Well, maybe I'm a racist, but. Oh, come on, Lewis. I really hate that. It's you're so guilty. It's like throwing darts at a blob of jello. There's no satisfying hint. Just quiver. The darts just flop in and bench. I just feel like when you're discussing lines of oppression, it gets very complicated there. Oh, is that a fact? You know, we black drag queens have an intimate knowledge of the complexity of lines of oppression. Ex black drag queen. Actually, ex ex. You're doing drag again? Maybe. I don't have to tell you. Maybe. Well, well I think it's sexual. I didn't ask you. Well, it is. I think the gay community has to adopt the same attitude towards drag that black women have to take towards black women blue singers. Oh my, we are walking dangerous tonight. Well, it is all internalized oppression, right? The masochism, the stereotypes, the- Lewis, are you trying to make me hate you? No, I- Are you deliberately transforming yourself into an arrogant, sexual, political, stylish slash racist, flag-waving thug for my benefit? You know what I think? What? You hate me because I'm Jew. I am leaving. <laughs> it's true! Louis, you have no basis to that. Louis, it's good to know you haven't changed. It's good to know you're still an honorary citizen of the Twilight Zone. And on behalf of racial insensitivity, you have the flaming fuck 
of a lot of nerve to call me an anti-Semite. Now I really gotta go. Did you call me Luda too? It was a joke. So? I didn't think it was funny, it was hostile. It was three years ago. So? Someday you'll have to explain that to me. But right now, you hate me because you hate black people. I do not. But I do think most black people are anti-Semitic. Most black people. That's racist, Louis. And I think most Jews. Louis Farrakhan. Hey, cops. Jesse Jackson. Oh, Jackson. Really, Louis? This is... Hiding town, hiding town. Jesse Jackson. You voted for Jesse Jackson, and you sent checks to the Rainbow Coalition. I'm in England. The checks bounce. All your checks bounce. You're political everything. What's that supposed to mean? You may be dumb as shit, but I think you can try to figure it out. So try. I was never ambivalent about Friar. I love him. I do. Nobody said different. Real love is an ambivalence. Real love is an ambivalence. I swear that's a line from my favorite novel. In love with night and mysterious, but I swear you haven't read it. Treatment number four? Pharmaceutical miracle. Lazarus breathes again. Do you want the laundry list? Shirt sure, off. Uh, let's check the. There's the ship problem, the morale problem, and the weight problem. Only six. That's good. Pants? And he thinks he's going crazy. Looking good. What else? Ankle sore and swollen, but leg is better. Nausea's mostly gone with the little orange pills. The M is pure liquid, but not blood anymore. For now, my eye doctor says everything is going to be okay. For now, my dentist says yuck when he sees my fuzzy tongue, and he wears a condom on his thumb and forefinger and a mask. So what? <laughs> my dermatologist is in Hawaii, and my mother will leave her out of it, which is usually where she's at, out of it. My glands are like walnut. My weight is holding steady and Two days ago, a friend of mine died of bird tuberculosis. Bird tuberculosis. And I was afraid. And I didn't go see him because uh, he is an Irish Catholic and it's probably an open casket and I was afraid of something. The bird to be your man. Seeing him, or... So I guess I'm doing okay. Except for the fact that I'm going nuts. We ran a sacrifice most of the series in there. I know, I know. but. I feel like something terrifying is on its way, you know? Like a missile from outer space, and it's plummeting down towards Earth, and I'm ground zero, and... You know, I am known for more unknown as a cool, collected queen, and I am rubble. There's really nothing to worry about. I think that Shokin, Bamromim, Hamse, Menuko, Nechono, Alcanfe, Aschino. What? Everything's fine. Bemados, ke doshim, ut harim, ke zohar, horokia, mas harim. I don't understand what you're doing. I just. I... Es, neshimas, prior, shel, holot, lio lema, baver, shenol vu, ze doha, baad, as koras, nish. Macho. Why are you doing that? Stop it! Stop it! Stop what? You were... Weren't you just speaking in Hebrew? No. I'm basically Latin American. I didn't speak in Hebrew. Oh, God. I, I, I... Look, I'm... I'm sorry. I have a waiting room full of... I think you're one of the lucky ones. You'll live for years, probably. You're pretty healthy for someone with no immune system. Are you seeing someone lulling into the danger out there? No, I don't want to talk Well, think about it. You aren't going crazy. You're just under a lot of stress. No wonder. Things. 
and I feel so cold, and I miss him. I miss him so much. But then I think those sores, that smell, I could be, I could be sick. Maybe I'm sick too. Belize, will you tell them I love them? Will you do that for me? I thought about it for a very long time, and I still do not know what love is. Justice is simple, democracy is simple. Those things are un unambivalent. I'm dying! He's dying, you just wish you were. Now, look up into that night sky. Purple? Purple? What kind of homosexual are you, boy? That color isn't purple, that's moi. Today it's felt like being scared. And sooner or later, this whole place will be blanketed in white. You can smell it. Can you smell it? Smell what? Complaints, forgiveness, grace. No. <sighs> Louis, you're none of my business. You're none of my business. National order of travel agents to get involved with clients. Rules are rules. I'm not the one you really want, anyways. There isn't anyone, maybe an Eskimo, who can ice fish for food and help me build a nest for when the baby comes? There are no Eskimo in Antarctica. And you're not really pregnant. You made that up. Well, all of this is made up. So if the snow feels cold, then I can be pregnant, right? I can be pregnant here and I can have any kind of baby I want. This is a retreat. A vacuum. Its virtue is that it lacks everything. Deep freeze for feeling. You can feel numb and safe here. That is what you came for. Respect the delicate ecology of your delusion. You mean like no Eskimo in Antarctica? Correcto. No Eskimo. Ice and snow. Well then, who's that? An Eskimo. An Antarctic Eskimo. A fisher of the polar deep. There's something wrong with you. I'm going to like this place. It's my own National Geographic special. <laughs> I think I felt her kicking. Maybe I'll give birth to a baby covered with thick white fur. So like that she won't be cold. And my breasts will be full of hot cocoa so that she doesn't get chilly. And if it gets really cold, she'll have a pouch I can crawl into like a marsupial. We'll mend together. That's what we'll do. We'll mend. Um, excuse me? Excuse me? Is this Brooklyn? <laughs> Is this Pineapple Street? Is there a bus or a train or a 
I'm lost. I just arrived from Salt Lake City, Utah. I got on the bus I was supposed to take, and I got off at the stop I was supposed to get off on. At least I thought it was. I asked the bus driver, and he nodded, even though I think he's from one of those countries where they nod at everything, even though they have no idea what they're talking about. I don't even think he spoke English, which I think would make him ineligible for public transportation employment. <laughs> Do you speak English? Good. Well, can you tell me how I get to Brooklyn? Um, okay. Uh, Do you possibly know... Rock! The Bronx? Well, how on earth did I get to the Bronx? When I specifically told him I needed to get to... Slurp, slurp, slurp. Will you stop that disgusting slurping? You disgusting slurping feeding animal. Feeding yourself. Just feeding yourself. What would it matter to you or to anyone if you just stopped feeding and die? <laughs> well, can you at least uh, tell me? Well, I was a Petrusco bread named after a cola. What? That was a joke. Well, then what's the punchline? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Isn't there anyone Stand around? Stand further off, you fat, loathsome whore. <laughs> you can't have any more of this. Slurp, 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 you animal. And I know you'll just go pee it all out somewhere. Behind what bush will you do that? It's fucking cold out here, and I... Oh, yeah, that's right. Because it's supposed to have been a tunnel. That's not very funny. Have you read the prophecies of Nostradamus? Who? Nostradamus. Some guy I went out with once. Oh. Lovely. Outcast. Eyes like scary. Shut scary. up! Please! Now, can you please stop your jabbering for one minute and tell me how I can get to Brooklyn? Because you know. And because you're the only one around here who can tell me. Now, seriously, if you could just, if you could just get yourself together. I am sorry you're psychotic, but you need to take a deep breath and tell me. Do it! Good. Now, exhale. Good. Now, can you please tell me how I get to Brooklyn? Don't know, never been. Sorry. What to do? I don't suppose you know where the Mormon's visitor center is? Smith and Broadway. Well, now, how do you know where that is? Go there all the time. Free movies. Boring. But you can stay all day. Well, how do I get to the... Take the D train. Next block, make a right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. In the new century, they will all be insane. <laughs> I just can't. The answer's no. I'm sorry, Roy. Oh, well, apologies. I'm sorry, Roy. Oh, well, apologies. I can't see there's anyone asking for apologies. My wife is missing, Roy. My mother's coming from Salt Lake to tell look, I guess. I'm supposed to be at the airport picking her up now, but I just spent two days in a hospital, Roy, with a bleeding ulcer. I was spitting up blood. Blood, huh? Look, I'm very busy here, and I- It's just a job. A job? A job? Washington! You dumb Utah Mormon hick shit! Roy! Ah, uh, Washington! When Washington called me, you think I said, Ah, uh, fuck no, I can't go. I've got two fingers up my asshole and a little moral nosebleed to boot. When Washington called, my young pretty punk friend, you can go and go fuck yourself, because the train is pulled out, gone, out in the clouds. <coughs> fuck you, Mary Jane, get out of here. Just let me talk, explain, never. <coughs> you broke my heart, explain that. I love you, Roy. There's so much that I want to be. What you see in me, I want to be capable of that. I've tried, really I have, but I can't do this. Not because I don't believe in you, but because I believe in you so much for what you stand for. At heart, the order, the decency, I would give anything to protect that, but there are laws I just can't break. It's too ingrained. It's not me. There's enough damage I've already done. Maybe you were right. Maybe I'm dead. You're not dead, boy. You're a sippy. You love me. Oh, that's moving. I moved. 
I warned you about her, didn't I? But you didn't listen to me. Because you said, Roy's nice and Roy's smart. But, well, Roy isn't nice. Uh, you want to be nice, right? A nice, nice man. Do you know what I'm going to look back on in my life and be most proudest of? And I've helped make lawyers and mayors and more goddamn judges and tax-free money in New York City. You ever hear of Ethel Rosenberg, Joe? Well, I guess I, yes. Yes, Joe, you have. If it weren't for me, Ethel Rosenberg would be alive today writing some personal advice column for Miss Magazine. But she isn't. Because every day I was on the phone talking with the judge. Roy! Talking with the judge, doing what I do best. Making sure that timid Yid Nebish did his duty to America, to history. That sweet, unprepossessing woman. Two kids. Boo hoo! Reminded us all of our little Jewish mamas. She was this close to getting life. I pleaded till I wept to put her in the chair. Me, I did that. I would have fucking pulled the switch too if they didn't let me. Why? Because I fucking hate traitors. Because I fucking hate communists. Was it legal? Fuck legal. Am I nice? Fuck nice. You want to be nice or you want to be effective? Make the law subject to it. Choose. Your wife chose. She'll be back. I, you gotta send her to Washington. I don't believe you. Gospel. You can't possibly mean what you're saying, Roy. You were the assistant United States attorney on the Rosenberg case. Ex parte communication with the judge would be sensible, or at least conspiracy. And in a case that results in execution, it's... What? Murder? You're not well is all. Who's not well? You said... I said nothing. Roy, you have cancer. No, I don't. You told me you were dying. I don't know what you're talking about. Never felt better in my life. I'm at 100%. I feel fine. Shake. It's okay that you hurt me, baby Joe. It's because I love you. Prodigal son, the world will wipe its dirty hands all over you. It already has, Roy. Now go. Always be here waiting. What did you want from me, you transgressors, a grateful little fucking? Oh. Transgress a little, Joseph. Ah, oh, fuck. Andy! Oh, God, Andy! Uh -huh. Who the fuck are you, the new nurse? Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, Ethel. You don't look good, Roy. Oh, Ethel, I don't feel good. But you lost a lot of weight. That suits you. You were heavy back then. Zap to <laughs> I'll have your back in 1960 before the body thing started. I look like a skeleton, they stare. Shit's really hit the fan, huh, Roy? Well, the fun's just started. What is this, Ethel Halloween? You're trying to scare me? Well, boo! Better dead than red. Ugh. Someone trying to shake me up? Ha ha! From the throne of God in heaven to the belly of hell, you don't want to fuck yourself. He's not afraid of you or death or nobody. Seeing you soon, right? Julia sends you regards. Aw, uh, send this to Julius. <laughs> You're a sick man, Roy. Andy! He doesn't hear you. I guess we should call the ambulance. Buttons. Such things you got now. What do I dial, Roy? 911. It sings. La, la, la. Huh? Yes. You should please send an ambulance to the home of Mr. Roy Cohn, the famous lawyer. Beats me. Pain in his gut. Bad. A bad pain. What's the address, Roy? 244 East 87th. 244 East 87th Street? No apartment number. He's got the whole building. My name? Ethel Dinglass Rosenberg. No, I'm not related to Mr. Cohn. I'm an old friend. They said a minute. We've got all the time in the world, Ethel. You're immortal. That's right, Ethel. I'm immortal. I've made my way into history. I'm not never going to die. History's about to crack wide open. Millennium approaches.
excited, tonight she arrived right through the roof. Ha, a dumb, ha, a doll. Well, then, boss, for a pillar can doesn't have any feeling of godly act. Look! A crucifix! Fuck off! Get the fuck out of my room! Go! Hard as a hickory knob, I'll bet. We all can mess with the air rolls if you act cool like you. Dance! Dance? Stand up, damn it! Give us your hands and dance! Something in common. 